So we are going on with the OpenGL series. This is the sixth episode. And today we are going to create this. So basically we are going to see how to manipulate the position of um, objects created through JITGL multiple inside JITGen. So we are going to see a bit of trigonometry, a bit of math, but nothing too hard. And this will be hopefully useful. So, okay, let's start. Okay, so this is the patch as we left it uh, in the previous tutorial. Actually, as you open the patch, there is nothing apart the light and the floor in the screen. That's because we have to press this bang here because this bang will fit the matrix inside the GGL multiple uh, for the position and the matrix for the scale. So they are both noise matrices, which means random numbers. And we get all our spheres with uh, uh, different scales. Actually, I think we have to, yeah, we have to bang a second time because uh, actually a more correct order of banging those matrices will be something like this. First, this matrix gets banged, the JIT noise the, uh, gets banged in the left inlet, then the second matrix gets banged, banged in the, the second inlet, and then the, it gets banged again in the first inlet. And this is, uh, uh, this is the correct way of sending uh, the matrices inside the JIT gen, because otherwise it will just send uh, first this matrix and then this one, but without actually using uh, uh, the noise, the, the second matrix. Okay, so now this is correct. So we don't need the sketch object in this video, so let's disable it by putting enable zero as an attribute. Cool, now we have our, our spheres. So let's go back into multiple. Let's actually change the spheres to cubes. So target name Q, uh, no, sorry, target name stays spheres, but we have to change the shape of these objects. So let's go into shape. So we have several shapes as we saw last time. And let's say cube. Let's bang again. Uh, cool. Now we have a bunch of cubes in our scene. Pretty cool. Let's actually maybe make more of them, like 20 by 20. So we have to change both the uh, dimensions of these matrices. Okay, this looks... This looks good. Uh, let's maybe bring our camera to look a bit more up. So let's go here, camera. And instead of saying look at 0, 0, 0, let's say look at 1, 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0. Okay, yeah, this is a bit more central now. Uh, let's maybe try even 1.5. Uh, yeah, yeah, this looks actually right. Cool. Okay, so let's go back into multiple. Um, now, what we need to do is to continuously, to continuously bang a matrix, a matrix inside the left inlet of JITGen in order to continuously update the content of JITGen. So let's create a JIT matrix. And let's create a receiver for our metro. Our metro is um, the metro, the bank sent by the JIT world. So let's connect it. To it. So if we connect it to the JIT noise, you can see it just keeps on uh, randomly changing the position of these objects. This is not what we want. So what we want is to feed the first the matrix, the JIT noise inside the matrix then to connect the matrix to the metro. So if we bang now, right, this is continuously updated, uh, but the matrix has always the same data inside. Okay. Oh, and by the way, let's for one second uh, um, enable again the GGL sketch. And um, let's bang again here. Okay, there's something wrong with the JIT sketch. So, yeah, something was apparently wrong with my ZLA group, but uh, let's actually, you know, we can do something like this. ZLA clear, it will be the first thing we bang, so we are sure that the ZLA is cleared, and then we either, okay. Uh, 
Anyway, so yeah, activated again the GGL um, sketch, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, we get those lines. I want you to notice something. These lines are a bit jagged on the edges, and every 3D shape is in general the edges are a bit um, like have a sawtooth appearance. They're a bit jagged. Uh, there is a way to solve this, which is to uh, set the attribute for Jit World. Oh, Max just crashed. Perfect. So the way to solve this is to use the um, FSAA attribute in Jit World, which means full scale anti aliasing, which basically uh, will, uh, how it works, it's, uh, it's basically a feature implemented by the graphic card on your computer and will basically render everything at double the size. So it will render in a virtual window that is double the size of this and then down sample uh, doing interpolation uh, down. So basically it will down sample to the actual dimension of the windows and in this process it will interpolate uh, the pixel. In this way the lines look a bit better. They look actually much better. All right. Uh, let's again disable the GGL sketch. We're not going to use it for the moment. And uh, let's just for fun, let's create another light. So let's go inside the light. Let's copy this, our point light. And okay, this is our second light. Let's give it a different offset for the noise in order to give it a different position from the other light. Okay, cool. Uh, let's now change the color to something more blue, for example. So 0.2. Okay, this looks right. Let's adjust also the color of uh, the sphere that represents this light. So, like this. Okay, let's make both those lights maybe a bit bigger, just slightly. So from 0 0.05 scale to 0 0.1, I will say. Okay, now they're a bit bigger. Okay, cool. So now we have two lights moving around in our scene. Okay, let's start to actually animate our objects from inside Jit Gen. So the first thing that we need to animate it's basically a number that is continuously changing, which we call the call, for example, time. So we, we don't have a way to get a continuously changing number inside, um, uh, directly inside GGen. We need to pass it from the outside patch. Now, in order to do this, we need to introduce a new object uh, inside GGen, which is called Param. So let's create it. We have to, Param works like this. It's like an object that references uh, uh, a message outside of the patch. So, for example, if I write param time and I give it a default value of zero, then I can go in the um, the mother patch, create um, create a message, write time dollar one, and then whatever number I will pass inside this variable here will be transferred and can be used uh, uh, instead of this uh, time message. So, for example, if I say multiplied by time, it means that whatever number I pass here will be used instead of time. Okay, so this opens a lot of possibilities already, right? So, cool. Okay, this is not uh, how we're going to use it. We're going, we want to actually pass a continuously uh, growing number, so we can use clocker for that. It's an object that gives us the passing time since it was created. We will divide this by 1000 so we get uh, the milliseconds since it was, uh, sorry, the second since it was created. And we get in this way a nicely uh, number that goes continuously up. Cool. Okay. Now, with this number, we can actually start to change the position of those cubes. Uh, now, let's say that we want them to move in circle we can do something like that. We can basically take the cosine and the sine of time and then basically just use these as the x and y. So let's try uh, x and z, sorry. So something like that. And this will just, we will have like a column that moves in circle. Uh, let's make this a bit faster by dividing by 500. Okay, cool. Now, uh, in order for us to get uh, this 
to be like different for every single cube, we have to use the position of the cubes themselves. We have to put this into the uh, equation. So we can do this uh, like that. We can do, for example, param time. Uh, let's switch x, y from this. Uh, so the y coordinate of the position of our cubes. And we can, for example, like multiply the time for the y. And in this way, we get a different value of time for every point in this column. And uh, on the second half, it will go in a direction, so in the negative direction, and the upper half, it will go in the positive direction, because this goes from uh, minus 4 to 4. Okay, so this looks already cool. If we want to make this bigger, we just have to multiply the cosine and sine for a number like 4, for example. So both of them. Whoa, okay, this is spinning actually pretty fast. So let's actually divide this again. Maybe 1,500. Okay, this looks cool. Cool. So we basically have two, uh, these, uh, the cubes are moving in two different uh, waves, like here they go on the left, here they go on the right. Uh, that's actually that's actually pretty cool. Let's create another cosine and let's use it to actually uh, distort the y appearance of these uh, of the cubes. So we can sum this to the y. So we can do like this. We can get again. Uh, we can get again this value and use it just like this. Okay, maybe let's multiply for something smaller because we don't want such a big change in y, something like that maybe. Okay, let's give it also a little bigger offset to the cubes. Okay, something like that, it's good. Uh, let's actually bring a bit the floor down. So the floor is here, position minus 3. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back inside multiple. Um, okay, let's see what we can do here still. We could, for example, if we just get, if we just get the cosine of the y, uh, this will be just a fixed value, right? So, but for example, we could sum this to the time. Instead of multiplying that, we could actually sum this to the time uh, in order to have uh, to have a continuously changing number that is anyway influenced by the y. We could uh, maybe multiply the y by a bigger number, like here. And uh, we start to get we start to get something nice. If we instead of summing, uh, instead of multiplying, we sum those, and then we maybe can also use the epsilon coordinates multiplied by four. Uh, we will have different, uh, like different uh, stripes of uh, cubes. So um, this is actually this is actually pretty cool. If we multiply like this. And uh, let's try then to multiply. I'm just I'm just playing a bit around at the moment, as you can see. Just want to check what different results we get if we start to mix those parameters in a bit of uh, different ways. Let's reduce a bit even these. Um, okay, but I think you got the idea. So basically, the, the major thing here is to use the cosine and sine to create the equation of a circle. So we can basically uh, keep the circle moving using the time parameter. And we can also give an offset to, uh, to the position. So instead of having a perfect circle, we can use, for example, the still the random, uh, the random values. To have a bit of an offset, so 
we can simply sum this cosine and sine to the x and z. Uh, okay, but it's a bit too much. So let's, for example, multiply this by something smaller. Oh, I mean, uh, I mean, let's multiply this. like that okay so we have a little offset on the x and z axis All right yeah and we get uh yeah we get something that is pretty interesting uh this is this is kind of it's kind of interesting let's maybe get more cubes so for example 30 by 30 30 by 30 boom Okay, okay, interesting. We can also change um, from y to x. So from y we can change to x to get... Um, so it's now using the x position to control the, um, the angle that will basically... It's basically going to, um, to move the circles. So let's actually multiply by 2 pi here. Uh, let's try with z. Yeah, we get every time kind of a different behavior. I think my favorite is still the epsilon because it's then uh, using the vertical position to influence uh, also the direction of the of the motion. Uh, yeah, so we have our crazy rotating cubes. So by playing a bit around with uh, trigonometry and a bit of sine and cosine, nothing really crazy, uh, we got these uh, uh, we got these uh, rotating cube. Now, if we want to activate the GGL sketch, we can still do it. Let's see what we get. Yeah, basically uh, all the cubes are connected by lines. So in couples of two, every cube is connected with another cube. Um, with lines and we can uh, for example activate the blending but this we didn't see yet so um, this we will see in a future video so for the moment let's actually disable it again uh, let's load this bad boy down by dividing for example by 2500 let's let's just maybe just increase a bit the vertical movement so they go up and down and uh, let's use uh, let's use just this okay yeah that's kind of that's kind of cool so what if we bypass these uh, yeah so uh, you have to play around and to see what is the best result according to you. For the moment, I will leave it like that. Okay, so um, this will be it for this video. In the next one, we are going to see a bit of um, a bit of other stuff about how to how to move these shapes, how to change the appearance of the shapes, and so on. Oh, and uh, let's notice that I changed the dimensions of these um, of these uh, grid shape object. As if you remember, the dimensions means how many vertices uh, this object will have. So uh, the default is 20 by 20, and uh, this uh, is kind of uh, if we have a sphere as a shape, this is kind of making a different effect. So this, the sphere doesn't look so spherical anymore. With cubes, it doesn't really matter. So I just uh, diminished by 20 by 20 to 10 by 10 in order to have a better frame rate. Okay, we can also reduce it even further and we get triangles instead of sphere pyramids actually. So pretty fun. Uh, anyway, it's kind of cool with spheres. I think I will leave it, I will leave it like this. And I will see you hopefully guys in the next video. You can check my Patreon link in the description for um, to get this patch for free and to download some more patches and to support the production of these tutorials. Hopefully this was useful and uh, see you in the next video. Ciao.